Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Travis Wheeler. I'm a research associate here in the South Asia program. And I'm joined by my colleague, Jillian Gaynor, who is also a research assistant in the program. We are two of the co-producers of a new, exciting Stimson initiative called Nuclear South Asia. And I also want to say uh, or acknowledge uh, Shane Mason is in the audience. Uh, Shane was also a major contributor to this initiative. So Nuclear South Asia is a Stimson open online course. It's meant to provide emerging analysts in India, Pakistan, and beyond with a platform to study nuclear competition and dangers on the subcontinent. I should mention it's free. That's one of the most important points. It is a free online course. It is accessible to anyone who wants to learn, who has a hunger to learn about these issues. And it's now available in its entirety at nuclearlearning.org. So three ideas we had um, in mind when we were creating this course is we wanted to create a course that was diverse, both in terms of demographics and perspectives. We wanted a course that was accessible. And we also wanted to make sure that the course was as comprehensive as possible. So I think those next, these next slides will show you how we went about that. Okay, so we interviewed for this initiative more than 80 experts on nuclear South Asia in India, Pakistan, the United States, and elsewhere. Think about that for a minute. We interviewed more than 80 experts. Scholars, former diplomats, military officers, professors, academics, analysts, both established and also emerging analysts in the region. We interviewed so many people, again, not just because we wanted to make sure we had representation from South Asia, but we wanted the most diversity of perspective. So that's what we've tried to do in making this material available. I mentioned accessibility. We wanted the course to be as accessible to as wide of an audience as possible. So you can see from this map, we have 1,400 students and counting. Primarily India, Pakistan, and the US is our primary audience. Mm -hmm. But we're also finding a lot of interest in the course in Russia, Australia, uh, countries in Europe, North America, uh, and also Colombia and places like Brazil. So we're finding that the appetite and interest for the, a course on these topics is actually quite broad. And then comprehensiveness. As I said, this is one of the most comprehensive resources available online on India and Pakistan's nuclear trajectories. It's sort of the video equivalent of maybe a half dozen edited volumes. We cover everything from nuclear history, beginning with the Atoms for Peace program, India's peaceful nuclear explosion, the 1998 nuclear tests. We move into nuclear policy and posture and the evolution uh, of those doctrines and postures over time the emergence of tactical nuclear weapons, other new capabilities, and then <coughs> doctrinal uh, shifts, operational shifts, such as the Cold Start Doctrine. In the fourth chapter of the course, we talk about the global nuclear order. We try to situate India and Pakistan in that order, talk about their relationship with the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. We talk about the Indo-US Civil Nuclear Deal, which was a hot topic this morning on our first panel. We also talk about the contemporary debate regarding India and Pakistan's prospective membership in the nuclear suppliers group. The fifth chapter deals with nuclear crises dating back to brass tacks all the way through Mumbai. We focus on US crisis management practices in those crises. And we also look at what lessons India and Pakistan have learned in those crises. In chapter six, we talk about confidence building and nuclear risk reduction measures, starting with the Cold War what worked, what didn't, assessing contemporary CBMs and NNRMs in South Asia, and then looking to the future. What are some of the ideas out there about how to build more confidence into the bilateral relationship and reduce nuclear dangers? And finally, we have a chapter that's on the future of nuclear South Asia, talking a lot about the competitive dynamics that we're here today to discuss, 
but also looking at uh, the, MIRV, the debate about MIRVs, ballistic missile defense, emergence of counterforce targeting strategies, naval nuclear dynamics, and China's role in nuclear South Asia, including as a crisis manager. So all told, it's 64 video lessons and about eight and a half hours of video content. I'll turn it over to Jillian, who will take you through the interface. Check, check. Uh, so to enroll in the course, you navigate to nuclearlearning.org, and this will be the first screen that you see. This is the Nuclear South Asia homepage. You simply click the Enroll for Free button and enter your name, an email, and a password. Also on the homepage are several links to the various nuclear learning um, social media sites and other resources. If you scroll down, there's also a brief description of the course. So the majority of the content in Nuclear South Asia are video lectures. Uh, this is a screenshot of what the video lectures look like. Uh, this is the main screen that students will see when they're taking the course. If you see over to the left, uh, you can navigate through the chapters, lessons, quizzes, resources, and all other forms of content. It's really easy to keep track of where you are and uh, your progress through the course. So in addition to the video content, um, there are also several backgrounders. These backgrounders serve as a supplement to the video lectures. They provide additional content or additional context uh, for the issues that are discussed. Uh, the content ranges anywhere from timelines to organizational charts to key terms to general overviews. So at the end of each chapter is a multiple choice quiz. Uh, the quizzes are for the purpose of reinforcing learning, reiterating main ideas, and just generally ensuring that the students are comprehending the material. Each question has a short paragraph explanation with citations to academic resources for greater depth. At the end of the course is a pass-fail final exam. In order to pass the exam, students need an 80%, after which they can receive um, an optional digital Stimson-issued certificate. Uh, the certificate is basically a good opportunity um, for future engagement with not only the Stimson Center, but also the nuclear learning community at large. All right, so we've launched this new exciting initiative. Everything's available online. Where are we going from here? So a lot of our focus is going to be in adapting this material uh, for students, for professors in the room, people who work in government. We want to make all this amazing video content as accessible as possible and also adapt it to meet varying needs. Currently it's an eight and a half hour course in terms of video, probably take you about 10 hours to complete it, but we recognize that for university uh, classes, if you want to have a week on nuclear South Asia, a 90 minute video lecture might work better. So we're working to adapt that and we really want your feedback to help us do that. So we're creating a nuclear learning community. The community is primarily at nuclearlearning.org, but we're building this community out on various social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you name it, we're gonna be on it. I wanna invite everyone who's here at the Simpson Center or watching with us online to join and become a part of this community. Really, we've benefited from having the perspectives of so many experts and being a part of this initiative and helping us and guiding us along the way. And for this initiative to succeed, for it to really take off in South Asia and beyond, we need continued guidance and feedback from those in the room and also students watching, watching in South Asia. We'd like to encourage you to tell your colleagues about this initiative, to share news of this initiative with emerging analysts in India and Pakistan. And we'd also like to, you to give us feedback. So my email address is twheeler at stimson.org. You can email me at any time. I'm getting emails about the course constantly. 
I love it. I love getting the feedback, and we are constantly building that feedback in to making this a better product that's more tailored to meet the needs of the different communities and audiences we're trying to reach.